Politico.com, hard stop. States would lose National Guard virus workers. The Trump administration's order ends deployments. On June 24, just one day before thousands would qualify for education and retirement benefits. Now, producer CJ pulling that wonderful stock photo up. I love this. I gotta gotta read uh, the caption. Members of the Connecticut National Guard train with hospital staff in Stamford, Connecticut. And I'm sure this is some old stock photo. What, what does it say? Getty images. Anyway, you got you've got a stern looking. Is it looks like an Asian woman doctor or nurse pointing it at these guys and another actually it's two two men two women it looks as national guard troops in cami uniform why do we have people wearing camis in hospitals i don't know if it made sense it wouldn't be the government more than forty thousand national guard members currently helping states test residents for the coronavirus and trace the spread of infections will face a hard stop on their deployments on june 24 just one day shy of many members becoming eligible for key federal benefits, according to a senior FEMA official. Now, this gets into you know Trump's management of the military. And on one side of this, he's gonna say, well, yeah, we got the troops to, to deploy and uh, they get plenty of benefits. They're well taken care of, that's, that's more than true. You know, so of course we did this efficiently by, by cutting them at this deadline. But it means that you will only have 89 days of duty credit, one day short of the 90 day threshold for qualifying for early retirement and education benefits under the post 9-11 GI Bill. And if you go to our next story, dnyuz.com, the commander in chief's following Wayne. And I, I love this. Another great photo for a new story here, using the military as props. But it's not just it's not just using the military as props in this photo. And as someone who has filled sandbags in the military and put up cami netting in a tactical environment, this is really fucking cheesy. This is just this, like this, you know. I, I understand. Okay, you want to surround yourself with troops behind you. Okay, maybe you're gonna have them in camis. So it looks casual. You have the podium, but look, we're gonna dress up and play commander in chief, and we're gonna make a real little stage bunker with sandbags and cami net, and I'm gonna look not, I'm gonna look real tough. Ugh. It's widely believed that the military is predisposed to lean Republican in 2009, even with George W. Bush's wars in Iraq and Afghanistan looking grim. A Gallup poll found that 34% of active duty personnel and veterans were Republicans versus 29% Democrats. In stark contrast, among Americans who had not served in the military, Republicans 26, Democrats 38. That history suggests that President Trump, with his preference for former generals as senior appointees and eagerness to indulge in a martial strut at every opportunity, would have a leg up with members of the armed forces. And indeed, he started his presidency with a strong support in the military, but that has changed. According to a Military Times survey conducted last fall, 50% of active service military hold an unfavorable view of the president. Compared with only 37% when he was elected, officers especially disfavor him with only a third indicating approval. Now, officers versus enlisted, I would wager, is the college-educated, more heavy demographic segment, obviously, versus enlisted that the officers are going to be paying attention to the news more, that their uh, opinion is going to be more nimble, more reflectively, uh, more accurately reflective of the coming trends in military opinion. So I would say if the, the officers here are, are just a little bit ahead in time of the enlisted, his cavalier attitude toward the military has been on conspicuous display during the pandemic last month. He said he would recall a thousand graduating army cadets to West Point, 50 miles north of New York City, the country's biggest hotspot for his commencement address, probably in June. Mr. Trump even said he was looking forward to a nice and tight formation of graduates devoid of the social distancing present at the Air Force Academy's commencement in Colorado Springs, in which Vice President Mike Pence spoke. I mean, I could go on. More egregiously, the acting secretary of the Navy, Thomas B. Modley, with Mr. Trump's 100% agreement, dismissed Captain Brett Crozier from the command of the aircraft carrier Theodore Roosevelt, 
who are confidentially requesting its evacuation after a surge of coronavirus infections. More than 1,000 of the Roosevelt's crew have tested positive for the coronavirus. One has died. So there, there's just so many things that, that we could say. I mean, Yemen. In February 17, Trump refused to take responsibility for a failed raid in Yemen that he had authorized and said he blamed my generals for the death of a Navy SEAL. Now, is Trump, I think Trump is actually genuinely pro-military, both in his political strategy and in his genuine sentiment uh, and his, his, his sort of flavor of being pro-military. Now, separate from that is the fact that he's a socialist. He's, he's a fascist. He's an authoritarian. Uh, he's 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 a lot more of a a true Democrat than than a, even a fake Republican. I've said Donald Trump is the greatest trick the Democrats ever played on the Republicans. I mean, first he was a liberal New York Democrat and then won the Republican primary. Just insanity, right? So he's very clumsy as a president, just in terms of policy. So w back to the Politico.com story with, you know, the National Guard members, you know, when, when you take people out of their regular lives and say, you know, now you're going to, uh, you're going to be on active duty. And, you know, maybe if you lost your, your civilian job and you're getting unemployment from, you know, working as a server, bartender, stripper, or whatever, then, hey, this is great. But the health coverage, so back to the political cover, uh, political story. The health coverage question is especially pressing during a pandemic. The National Guard confirmed to Politico that as of Monday, uh, 1,158 members have been diagnosed with COVID-19, including 617 active cases. The National Guard notes that members whose federal active status expires can enroll in a different health insurance program. TRICARE Reserve Select. <laughs> How's that working for the rest of you all under that program? But that program charges members and their families significant premiums, deductibles, and co-pays. Blah, 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 blah. And uh, this is just one more example of Trump not taking care of the troops unintentionally. And the longer term story of those of us in the warrior class, veterans and active duty troops and reservists going, maybe the military is not the best way for us to serve our country. Maybe it's not the best way for us to defend our country. Maybe we are on the verge of a military revolt. And I've been saying that we've been creeping towards this for a long time as people wake up and don't go back to sleep. I think that military revolt might best be manifest through veterans for Kokesh, military for Kokesh, as we've seen so many of our coalition groups blow up where we are pursuing the peaceful option of saying we don't need socialized defense. We don't need to throw the founder's advice of a decentralized militia-based defense out the window. We don't need to violate individual rights to protect our rights. We don't need to give in to the cancer of militarism on the warrior class. We can fight back because if the troops defended freedom, they'd attack the government.